One small step for generative AI, one giant leap for AGI, a complete survey on ChatGPT in AIGC era. So this paper was published just a few days back and the overall purpose of this paper is uh, to do a survey of the recent GPT technologies and take a overall view of these huge things that are happening over the last couple of months and weeks. So it says, uh, I will go over this paper, the most important part of this paper today. So overall, this work is the first to survey ChatGPT with a comprehensive review of its underlying technology, application and challenges. Moreover, we present an outlook on how ChatGPT might evolve to realize general purpose AIGC, uh, which is also known as AI generated content which will be a significant milestone for the development of AGI. So about the main technology behind ChatGPT, uh, there are two core techniques. The first one is the backbone architecture, which is transformer. And the second one is generative pre-training, that is autoregressive pre-training. So let's go through it. Uh, first one is the underlying principle of self-attention, uh, which posits that Given an input text, the mechanism is capable of allocating distinct weights to individual words, thereby facilitating the capture of dependencies and contextual relationships within the sequence. Each element within the sequence possess its unique representation to calculate the relationship of each element to others within the sequence. One computes a Q, that is query, key and value matrices of the input sequence. These matrices are derived from the linear transformations of the input sequence. Typically, the query matrix corresponds to the current element. The key matrix represent other elements and the value matrix encapsulates information to be aggregated. The association weight between the current element and other elements is determined by calculating the similarity between the query and key matrices. This is generally achieved through a dot product operation. Subsequently, the similarity is normalized to ensure that the sum of all associations equals 1, which commonly which is commonly executed via the softmax function the normalized weights are then applied to the corresponding values following the aggregation of the weighted values this process results in a novel representation that encompasses the association information between the current word and other words in the text the aforementioned process can formally be expressed with these equation uh, if you are familiar with the transformer architecture, you will know this attention equation is all too famous and uh, it appears in thousands if not millions of literature. Alright, so that was about the backbone architecture which is transformer and the next one, the next core concept here in behind GPT is the generative pre-training. So for models, there are multiple popular generative methods, modeling methods including energy-based, uh, variational autoencoder, GAN diffusion model. Here we mainly summarize autoregressive modeling methods as they are of the foundation of GPT models. So autoregressive models constitute a prominent approach for handling time series data in statistical analysis. These models specify that the output variable is linearly dependent on its preceding values. In the context of language modeling, autoregressive models predict the subsequent word given the previous word or the last probable word given the following words. The model learn a joined distribution of sequence data employing previous time steps as inputs to forecast each variable in the sequence autoregressive model posits that the joint distribution p theta x can be factorized into a product of conditional probabilities as demonstrated by this equation. While both rely on previous time steps, autoregressive models diverge from recurrent neural network architectures in the sense that the former utilizes previous time steps as input instead of the hidden state found in RNN. In a sense, autoregressive models can be conceptualized as a feed-forward network that incorporates all preceding time step variables as inputs. 
and about the technology path, the development of ChatGPT is based on a series of GPT models which constitute a substantial achievement for the field of NLP. An overview of this development is summarized in this figure. So uh, for the backbone, uh, both GPT and BERT use attention-based transformer. For the learning paradigm, both GPT and BERT use self-supervised learning. For the transfer learning, both GPT and BERT can be fine-tuned for downstream tasks. Now differences, the text context, GPT uses unidirectional text context while BERT uses bidirectional text context. And as to the architecture differences, GPT uses a decoder architecture while BERT uses an encoder architecture. And then the pre-training strategy here, GPT uses autoregressive modeling while BERT uses masked language modeling. So BERT versus GPT, traditional language model mainly focused on a particular task and could not be transferred to other tasks. Transfer learning is a common approach for alleviating this issue by pre-training a foundation model which can then be fine-tuned on various downstream tasks. Based on the architecture, there are three classes, encoder-decoder, encoder-only and decoder-only. Out of the numerous large language models, encoder-only BERT and decoder-only GPT are arguably the two most popular ones. After pre-training, both BERT and GPT can be fine-tuned and show competitive performance in downstream tasks. A code difference between BERT and GPT lies in their pre-training strategy, masked modeling and autoregressive modeling. So with masked modeling, BERT predicts masked language tokens from unmasked ones. A major advantage of BERT is that it can utilize bidirectional text information which makes it compatible with sentiment analysis task. Due to the discrepancy between the mask then predict pre-training task and downstream task, BERT is rarely used for downstream task without fine-tuning. But by contrast, autoregressive modeling methods represented by GPT show competitive performance for few shot or zero shot text generation. And then the paper talks about uh, the technicalities of uh, GPT-1, then GPT-2, then GPT-3, 3.5 and finally GPT-4. Let's quickly go through the GPT-4 here. Uh, for example, the virtual bar exam result for GPT-4 is in the top 10% of test participants as opposed to the score for GPT-3.5 which was in the lowest 10%. The capacity of GPT-4 to follow human intention is significantly better than that of earlier versions. The answers by GPT-4 were favored over the responses produced by GPT-3.5 on 70.2% of the 5,214 questions in the sample provided to GPT, uh, provided to chat GPT and the OpenAI API. After the overwhelming majority of its pre-training data ends in September 21, GPT-4 usually lacks awareness of what has happened and does not learn from its experiences. Alright, now uh, the paper talks about the application of ChatGPT in various fields. Uh, this is kind of in interesting. So, um, uh, so the first one is scientific writing. ChatGPT is widely recognized for its powerful content generation capabilities which have a significant impact on writing in the academic field. Many existing works have tested how ChatGPT can be applied to scientific writing including brainstorming, literature review, data analysis, direct content generation, grammar checking and serving as an academic reviewer. So under the brainstorming, ChatGPT can play a variety of roles in brainstorming ranging from simulating, stimulating creativity for new idea generation to providing suggestion for expanding existing ideas, ChatGPT can assist users in divergent and creative thinking. Then literature review. For example, the semantic scholar search engine, an AI-based uh, scientific literature research tool, has indexed more than 200 million scholarly publications. As a result, Finding relevant research papers and extracting key insights from them is almost like finding a needle in a haystack. Fortunately, ChatGPT as an AI-driven research 
reading tool can help us browse through a large number of papers and understand their content. In actual use, we can give a topic to ChatGPT, then it can help us find out the related literature. And then the most uh, commonly used uh, use case of ChatGPT, which is data analysis, the use of ChatGPT for data processing can change the research landscape. For example, uh, as shown in one of the uh, empirical research, ChatGPT completes the task of data analysis for a simulated data set of 100,000 healthcare workers of varying ages and risk profiles to help determine the effectiveness of vaccines which significantly speeds up the research process. And further, the paper also talks about um, how ChatGPT is superbly useful in content generation, which uh, we have seen examples of many, many times. Then proofreading, that's another great area for ChatGPT's application. In the medical field, ChatGPT can answer some basic questions about diagnosis and prevention. And the accuracy rate for quality measurement question is 76.9%, but there is still a lack of understanding of advanced questions such as treatment time and HCC screening criteria. All right. And then assisted software development. This is probably one of the most fearsome use of ChatGPT. That ChatGPT also has potential to revolutionize the way how code developers work in the software industry. Specifically, ChatGPT can provide assistance in solving programming errors by offering debugging help, error prediction, and error explanation. And now the paper talks about the challenges or the technical limitations of ChatGPT. So the first point is uh, uh, incorrectness. So ChatGPT sometimes generates wrong or meaningless answers that appear to be reasonable, which is like talking nonsense in a serious way. And then uh, illogical, ChatGPT's logic reasoning capability still needs improvement since ChatGPT lacks rational human thinking. It can neither think nor reason and thus failed to pass the Turing test. Inconsistency is the next point. ChatGPT can generate two different outputs when the model is fed with the same prompt input. And uh, the paper also takes into consideration some misuse cases uh, that we may do uh, with ChatGPT. Uh, so the first one is obviously plagiarism and misconduct, and then over-reliance on ChatGPT, improper con content, false dissemination, uh, then there's also ethical biases like bias, privacy, and fairness issues. And then there's a most important question, can AGI replace high-end jobs? So according to OpenAI's findings, uh, it shows that at least 10% of tasks for 80% of US workforce and at least 50% of tasks for 19% of workers will be impacted. It is worth noting that the Advent of new technology will inevitably replace some types of jobs. However, what makes AGI different is its potentially greater influence on high-end jobs than on low-end ones. This outlook is partially supported by the findings that high-wage jobs tend to have a higher risk of being replaced by AGI for which lawyer is a representative occupation.